I'm throwing away all this wardrobe Trousers and top hats and turtlenecks too I don't need more ponchos or petticoats Cause all I want to wear is you Why would you gather these garments? Dozens of dance shoes, a few dungarees Jettison your boots and Bermuda shorts Cause all you need to wear is me Let me be your weatherproof armor when it hails And in the winter winds my arms can keep you warm Darling, when the summer comes We can wear each other in the sun It's very validly vogue Friends, they are ever changing But loving is always in fashion for sure I don't care what styles I'm supposed to know Cause baby, to me you're couture Nice. Nice indeed. 
Hey, our good listeners, welcome back to another fine Listener Compositions episode. Welcome back. You know, this is one of the, my favorite things that we do. Indeed, man. This is uh, the sixth of our series. Indeed. Up until this point, we featured about 30 composers and songwriters. Wow. And uh, these have ranged from simple to complex, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. They, some of them come from smartphone microphones. Some have come from <laughs> high-end recording studios like the piece you just heard. And everything in between. And everything in between. And uh, speaking of the piece we just heard, how about Indeed. that? Wow. So I'm looking at the... Uh, uh, we, we got a copy of the score here, mm -hmm. which, which was generous. I, we appreciate that. Thank you, Visa. Yeah. Um, very nice. Very jazzy. Uh, very... Uh, some of those chords, man. Wow. Blowing my mind. Yeah, D flat 13, sharp 11. Mm -hmm. Nice. Just to explain really quickly, uh, so D flat. Uh huh. Yeah, then the seven is implied. Uh huh. And in jazz, we're usually talking about a flat seven, mm -hmm. I, I would imagine. Blue notes. Right. And then, uh, and then the sharp 11, which would be the sharp four. Mm -hmm. So that's why E natural. We're in the key of E flat, by the way. So E natural. E flat, yeah. That's, 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 that's crazy. And then, uh, and then you got to get the thirteen in there, which would be the six, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's B flat. So there's a tritone in those upper two uh, uh, chord tones, right? Yeah. Between uh, between sharp eleven and thirteen, this E natural in in B flat. And yet that's a that's a that's a that's a tritone, isn't it? Or am I thinking backwards? I mean, no, no, no. That's right. Yeah. So. Yeah, so you've got a little tritone in there. Uh huh. Uh, inter and, interesting little chord, and that chord happens for four measures, and then we're on to something else. <laughs> and somehow it sounds beautiful. Yeah, with all that great chaos, all yeah. that uh, frequency chaos. <laughs> well, you know, in, in this in this genre, I mean, things like this are often just you know we we think in in classical music we think of dissonances as needing to be resolved, right? That tritone mm -hmm. ha has to happen. You know, something has to happen to it. Uh, you know generally before the chord changes it has to be resolved in classical music in jazz that is usually considered just a lot of these things are considered consonances they don't mm. we don't in jazz worry about resolving dissonances in in the right way as much you know so the the fundamental functional harmony still goes on um uh there's there's circle of fifths progressions and stuff mm -hmm. like that you know i mean yeah. I, i'm uh i'm seeing yeah um one, and saying five. two five, uh, two five, two, yeah, six. and two six, yeah, kind of kind of stuff going on. One five, one seven, mm -hmm. you know, and then two five, and then this little passing motion down to, to down to six, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <coughs> but, uh, but but yeah, yeah. So that that fundamental structure goes on, but then there's all these really cool sort of dissonances on top of it. It's kind of the 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 structure of jazz in a way. Oh, so Matt, uh, this piece we're nerding out on. Yes. <laughs> this is called uh, Your Couture. Your Couture. From uh, Visa Oscar from uh, Helsinki, Finland. From Finland, wow. And let's give it up for the band. Yeah, man, they're great. Uh, so the vocals you heard was Antti Holma, uh, and he also produced it. Visa Oscar, same deal, he produced it, and he also... Um, he mix engineered it, mastered it, and that was him on the piano. You heard wonderful. And how about a shout out for that solo? Yeah, it was great. That piano solo. Yeah, love a good piano solo. And then uh, on drums we have Ansi Tirkonin. Tirkonin. <laughs> I told him I'd butcher these. <laughs> he sent me a recording of him actually pronouncing it properly. I'm trying to do it and, and we still can't do it. <laughs> yeah. And Turokoski on the bass. Very nice. This was recorded in the Sibelius Academy of Kalio Kunikala Studios by yeah. Oscar, Visa, Visa Oscar. And, and, and I'm assuming Sibelius Academy named after the composer, not the music notation software. Since it is Finland, right? I would imagine so. Yeah. Is that where Sibelius is from? That's where he is from. How fantastic. A little bit of legacy back in that, uh, <laughs> in that area there. So let's talk a little bit about Visa. Okay. The who, who has contacted us. A little bit about Visa. We first met Visa a little while back. Visa, a doctoral student at the University of Arts Helsinki Jazz Department. Very nice. Caught a labeling error that I missed on the website. Oh, wow. And wrote in to me. And then, of course, that led to other discussions. Come to find out he teaches jazz piano and jazz theory at some of the universities out there. I believe it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And he also produces and records some fantastic music. Yeah. yeah. 
So I listened to his Spotify page, as should you all. As should you Visa, all. Visa like the credit card, V-I-S-A. <laughs> Oscar like the grouch. <laughs> O-S-C-A-R. Probably nice. on all the major platforms. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. I would I would like to talk talk to Visa myself actually, because um I would I would love to hear a a jazz theorist's expert opinion on exactly how these chords are chosen sometimes. Mm-hmm. Right? Like D flat thirteen sharp eleven and I see C seven flat nine. Like why flat nine instead of C nine? Mm-hmm. Right? Like is is there any kind of process by which these particularly extended harmonies are chosen in in jazz music traditionally. So I I would love a, an expert jazz theorist's thoughts on that. It's something that's always uh, I've always pondered myself. Yeah, Be, be- being more of a classical theory person, right? Yeah, sure, sure. So what's up with that, Visa? Yeah, not man. To, not to mention E flat major. You got yourself a D flat major. That's a, that's a borrowed from the minor key, isn't it? That's a bar. Yeah, well, that would be a borrowed flat seven, which yeah. again is you know. Um, the flat seven, my understanding, and again, you know, Visa, help me out here. Uh-huh. Uh, but my understanding is is that you know the the flat seven in jazz is so endemic to the musical structure that, that making a chord out of the flat seven is just what you would do more than making a diminished seven chord out of the natural leading tone, right? That's a classical thing. You mm-hmm. know, you'd make seven out of D natural and resolve it to E flat, but but. Uh, that's not that's not as much a jazz thing as as the flat seven. Yeah, is my understanding. Again, I would love to talk to Visa about some of this stuff. Sure, sure. Really would. Hey, well, I I learned a new word. Oh yeah, couture. Couture. I was yeah. not quite familiar. Are you familiar with this it's word? It's French. I, I mean, yeah. It, um, it's it, it it sort of means what's in fashion, right? Oh, couture uh-huh. is is a phrase I've heard before. Oh, fashion of the day. Yeah, right. Yeah, some, something like that. H a u t. Uh huh. Oh, couture may may mean fashion of the day. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Or oh, that's de, de, de jour. Hey, that, that, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, French. that's de jour. De, you're right. Okay, so de jour is of the day. Oh, couture is is maybe prevailing fashion. Oh, no, no. Somebody help us with our French too. Yeah, Visa. <laughs> while, while we're asking for help, we're asking for assistance. And it's not it's not a your as in your fat like you own this fashion. It's you are. So he's saying that she is fashion. She is fashion. So, you are the fashion of the day. You are the fashion. It's, or it's, a, or it's a metaphor. Yeah. Um, Love it. And then what is this line? I was really interested. I really. Yeah, yeah. Trends, they are ever changing, but loving is always in fashion for sure. Yeah. I don't care what style I'm supposed to know because. To me, you're couture. Hey, <laughs> you are fashion. Yeah, you are fashion. Good. And if you don't, if you didn't, if you don't buy it, then at the end he kind of draws, brings it back all together by my favorite part of the song, which is a. Yeah, that was great. That was great. Is you and this note he lands you. on is like a. It's a C natural. It's a C natural, or no, it's an A natural. Or sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an A natural. It is the sharp eleven of the E flat major nine sharp eleven that that is that ends the song. E flat major nine with an A natural. Yeah, beautiful, isn't it? Ooh. It's almost got it's almost got a French sound to me. Some of those those tonal qualities almost have this sort of uh uh French Frenchish kind of kind of feel, like a French augmented six kind of feel. Maybe it's that sharp four. So so like E flat oh yeah, that's what it is. All right. So mm. E flat nine mm-hmm. sharp four has scale degree two and scale degree sharp four, although it's sharp eleven because it's compound. Mm-hmm. Which are two chords out of the French augmented six. Uh-huh. And the name of our song uh, the title of our song is a French word, couture, yeah. right? <laughs> So he's using, oh, love it. Using, love it. using the music to put you in the environment. Exactly. Yeah, love it, man. It's, it's great. Somebody thought about this a lot. <laughs> so Matt, what, mm-hmm. does, uh, what does Visa have to say about this? Mm. This is Visa talking about his song. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get most of my ideas by improvising on the piano. When I feel that some idea is clear enough, I record it in my phone's voice memos. Mm-hmm. Your couture, melody, harmony, and form were a single take played on my roads at my old studio room in Helsinki. I had a particular mood in my head and improvised an AABA straight to my voice memos. Later, I edited and recreated in Logic with an acoustic piano library, demo, bass, and drums. That demo I sent to lyricist and vocalist Mr. Antti Holma. Uh, Antti came up with the lyrics rather quickly because we wanted to record some songs in the crooner style. Mm. I like the crooner style. Yeah. 
It contains basic tonal jazz harmony of the hard bop era. We had already performed Lush Life in our duo concerts, and we wanted to have another song that would be our original in the same style. Isn't that cool, man? And tell, yeah. another shout out to Auntie Holma on those vocals. How 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 deep and rich and smoky and jazzy. He you know? really nails that style. Really, really does nail that style really well. You can uh, you can find out about more about these chords and actually check out the notation. All the anytime music has been uh, made available to us, we'll put it on the website for this episode. Absolutely, so you can check out uh, the notation. Yeah, and we we do have we do have Oscar's uh, score lead sheet. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, here with with the chords and, and the vocal melody and you know a little bit of the piano melody at the end and yeah it it's it's very helpful yeah I was kind of trying to walk the bass line in my head a little bit yeah and, and realizing I would probably really fall on my face as a jazz bassist at this point this but, bass this bassist was very tasteful um, yeah and they uh, but there was a time or two where they kind of went up high and did some cool little things just at the right time you know so yeah absolutely beautifully done now as he says the form is A A B A. And like I said, it features some hardcore chromaticism. Yeah. Um, it's at about 70 BPM, which is listed as a jazz ballad swing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're three flats, so E flat. A-A-B-A with a, with a little bit of a coda at the end. A little right? bit of a coda at the end, yeah. yeah. The fa 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 fashion part. Right, <laughs> that part. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, the, yeah, the A section is mainly E flat. And then for the B section, we go to G major just for a brief moment. And it gets very, very form, uh, very uh, straightforward jazz. We got the... One to the six to the two to the five turnaround. Yeah, right. And then um, there's another cool turnaround. He oh, there's another turnaround he uses, which is E flat, E diminished to F minor. Yeah, well, e he's made his way into sort of E, so but cool. yeah. Ah, isn't that lovely? Yeah. Which is which is kind of kind of Duke Ellington esque. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, with when he goes B minor, E seven, D minor, G. That's kind of made his way into E. Well, I I recommend you guys listen to this again. Mm-hmm. And then come, I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, and, th- and then come back to this point in the time code, uh, where it is, and then we'll resume from there. Excellent. All right. But before you listen again, I do want to say that you can find Visa Oscar. You can go to visaoscar.com. Right. Uh, and you you'll find links to Spotify, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. I also found Visa Oscar on Apple Music, so definitely check him out on uh, that or any other major platforms. Uh, and YouTube, he's got some great live performances with some seriously talented cats that he plays with out there. Yeah. And I dare you not to like it. <laughs> so yeah, give it one more listen, or several more, and we're going to move on to the next composer. Okay. Next we have Alex Turnbull from Toronto, Canada. All right. This piece is called Time Spent Alone. Time spent alone. Mm -hmm. Alex says before listening to the show, he didn't know what a diatonic meant. (laughs) But now he feels his growth has been exponential. That's wonderful. He now passes on this knowledge to his nine-year-old son, Grayson, with whom he goes on walks with. Oh, great. And now on these walks, they record sounds like throwing rocks or clapping in tunnels. And then they (laughs) go back home and assign these samples to playable drum kits. Interesting. (laughs) Yeah. Alex started following this producer named Sabrina Saids, uh, S-E-I-D-S, Saids. Mm-hmm. He says uh, she shares very useful logic pro tips via quick little Instagram and TikTok videos and is a super talented artist on top of that. She recently hosted a mix competition. I used much of what I learned from you guys, so I felt compelled to share my appreciation. I didn't win, but those who did were much deserving and, and I had a blast. So he shared what he did for this comp- so for, with this competition, which was very well done. She gave this uh, Sabrina gave her these vocal tracks and allowed people to mix it and produce around it and tweak it, you know. Yeah. And um, but now he has his own piece here, his own original one called "Time Spent Alone." Okay. Which he says was clearly named during the lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> so now we bring to you "Time Spent Alone" by Alex Turnbull. Good.
Very nice. Very nice indeed. Yeah, I love I love the atmospheric quality of of that mm-hmm. of that recording. Time spent alone. Yeah, this is a- sounds like you spent a lot of time in his recording studio alone. <laughs> I definitely. Yeah, because the production value is really pretty spot on. Pretty good. Know? Yeah. Um, again, we're in E flat. <laughs> again with the E flat. Second song in E flat. <laughs> Bunch of weirdos. Yeah, but this is. Uh, you know, just just to share how many uh, cool chord, uh, how many cool things you can do with E flat. You know, this is a very different feel. We well, the same key. You know, here's it's, another thing. As, as a bass player for a while, I dissed on E flat because I can't get that lower. Uh, yeah, but now you bought a five string. I got a five string, so I have no <laughs> excuse anymore, do I? <laughs> yeah. E now, flat. now E flat's just another key. Yes, we got to be my friend now. <laughs> but anyways, so back to this composition. Let's hear what Alex has to say about it. Okay. Uh, Alex says, I was scrolling through Logic Pro's sound library and came across a preset called Old VHS Tape Synth. Mm-hmm. It's nice. And instantly connected with it. It's funny how some sounds write parts for you. I am by no means a piano player, but in this case, the main theme was written and recorded in minutes. Everything else in the track is really just there to serve the vibe that it established. This track seemed to call out for a straightforward four on the floor house type beat. Do you know what that is, Matt? Can, yeah, can you that's just one on the floor? a bass drum on one and a snare hit on three. So bass drum on beat one, snare hit on beat three, mm-hmm. and then uh, hi hats on beat two and four. So booch, touch, booch, touch. Yeah. actually, that's not it. <laughs> Actually, what okay. it is is it's the kick on all four, all four beats. Is that what it is? Yeah. So we'll do that. We'll do it again. Okay. Uh, and actually, it's still the same kick and snare pattern. Yeah. It's like, pop. Oh, okay. So it's like a, it's got okay. that kind of house. Yeah, beat. no, leave, leave that in. Leave you correcting me. I like that for some reason. Are you serious? Yeah. All right, all right. All right. So, I mean, I always thought it was just that, and I know it's one of the first bass, uh, or, sorry, one of the first drum patterns drummers learn, mm-hmm. right? Just, I always thought it was, yeah, that, it was just. You know, it wasn't until like later on in life I found out. I thought it was what you're talking about, but then yeah. it, but it turns out four on the floor means well, that makes more sense. Floor being the floor drum, the kick drum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So four beats. Right, right, yeah. That mm-hmm. make that makes more sense. Hit all four of those beats yeah. on, on on the kick. Yeah. Anyways, continue. It, okay. Um, I went for a hike and threw a big rock against another big rock, and recorded it on my iPhone. I layered it in to contribute to the snare sound. Nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the deep sub bass is the Mo grandmother analog synth. Mm-hmm. It's a downright special sounding instrument that I really just try not to mess up after it's recorded. Mm-hmm. For the guitar parts, I use my Fender tube amp, which comes to life when you turn it up loud. That's the case, isn't it? Oh, usually, yeah. I plugged my bass into the same amp and it sounded so cool, I recorded the bass through it as well. That's original. Mm-hmm. Uh, harmonically speaking, I had to throw in what I believe would be a diminished seven of six chord mm-hmm. towards the end of the break. I thought I heard something go go a little S- crazy, interesting yeah. there for a minute. Yeah, we'll see if we can pick it out. Yeah, this is music student one one after all, and I wouldn't have a clue how to do that without your show. <laughs> <laughs> Whether that's a good thing or not is not specified, but mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there it is. Mm-hmm. We've created some monsters. Uh, the reference track I used was Why I Love You by Jay-Z and Kanye West. I figure they can probably afford a decent mix engineer. Eh? Yeah, probably, probably. so. Probably so. Yeah. So what is a reference track, Jeremy? Uh, the, the way I understood it was um, when like when Tonal Vision went into the studio and recorded our album, the engineer was like, now every album kind of has its own sound, its own kind of uh, yeah, yeah. EQ or um, kind of kind of feel. Yeah. And the, he had certain kind of software that could analyze the okay. sound. I was like, well, hell, <laughs> you know, Dark Side of the Moon is one of the greatest sounding albums I could think of. Let's yeah. use that as a reference track. Yeah. Even though it wasn't really a Pink Floydy album. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, yeah. But yeah, so you, you can put in an, an album and then have the software analyze it and then apply some of those par- parameters, parameters to, to your the, wow. final mix. So like EQ parameters and... Reverb parameters, or? yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong there, Alex, but I think yeah. that's what that is. That's that's fascinating. Alex continues. Alex continues. Uh, I'm a big fan of automating the master track, attenuating the volume, frequency, range, and stereo width in the quieter parts has really helped the drops hit harder by contrast. Yeah, you know, mm. this is actually something I tell my music tech students: is don't uh, don't forget about that master track and the and <laughs> the um. 
what do they call it in Logic Pro? Live volume or something like that, or, or um, live controllers, something something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's where you can draw the little line, and the volume will go up and down based on the direction of the line, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I tell them, don't forget about that because your know, songs have dynamics, you know, and your songs are really are a lot cooler when they're not just all at the same volume all the time, right? You know, let let it go up and down with the the flow back and forth of of the sort of the feeling, yeah. It's a great little, uh, great little music engineering mm-hmm. tip. There. Absolutely, and that's one thing I don't do enough of. Really messing with the master track. Yeah, I, I, I kind of hold it as just a sacrosanct. Like leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave the volume alone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, when you're doing music like this, though, like uh, like Alex is saying, you know, it can really, it can really help bring out. You know, it, it's kind of like an orchestra playing at piano versus mm. mezzo forte versus you know. True. True. Yeah. Um, when you're recording live. Recordings, you know, the the players are expected to do that a little more. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, go back and listen to the piano sol- solo in, in uh, Visa's track. You know, it's not, he's not playing it all at the same loudness. Mm-hmm. First of all, humans can't do that, nor should we, <laughs> right? And second of all, you know, we're we're you know loud and soft, artfully, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Emotionally, yeah. Well, um, so the first theme, the first theme we came across here establishes again, like I said, an E flat, right? Um, and you just kind of, for a little bit, going back and forth between mm. E-flat and G minor. So a one, median relationship, right? Oh, and I, t- I told you how I felt about median relationships, <laughs> didn't I? For those of you who haven't heard, I love median relationships. They're, they're pretty awesome. So yeah, so, and, and, then, and then the next part, which kind of is how the rest of the song unfolds, is this yep. kind of a C minor, which is six, and mm-hmm. then G minor, which is three. Yep. And then one. You know, and then one, which I don't really do a lot of, and I think it's a really cool, me- you know, like medians. You know, I'm a big fan of the medians. Like yeah, I said. yeah. How would you analyze that? I would just call it a, a one big old one chord. Yeah, with substitutions thereof, right? With the prolo- there. prolongation of four to to three to one. Yeah. And I could be wrong about this, but I mean, I've always con- I always thought that if you have a one and a three going back and forth, or a one and a six going back and forth, that's kind of considered. Tonal harmony function wise considered yeah. to be just a tonic function. Prolongation of one. Prolongation yeah. of one. Yeah. And and what may bre- may somewhat explain the sort of um uh uh stability and the in the and and sense of stillness that we feel harmonically, right? You know, the the get so our our har- our harmonies have this sense of stillness that, that allow us to listen to uh, allow us to listen to things like the the bass and the rhythm mm-hmm. and 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 the uh, timbral variation and things like that because we're not we're not spending a lot of time listening for function mm-hmm. right yeah and stillness I like that you said that because this is a song called time spent time spent alone, alone right yeah so um, well we're gonna go ahead and play this again pretty soon here but uh, one other cool thing I want to talk about is that that this is an E flat later on in the song you hear. You hear yep. this really low E really flat big note, low one, yeah. and that means something to me when I hear that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so one more time, shall we? Yes. This is time spent alone, knowing now what you know. Knowing what we know now. From Alex Trimble. I wonder if this is the VHS sound that he was talking about. It sounds kind of VHS-y, doesn't it? And then, here we are with the six, three, one. So this is kind of the main theme here. And we got that kick drum coming in. And then full kit. There's the four on the floor of that bass going yeah. the whole time. Yeah, and, and notice how the, that that prolongation of one, six, one, three, notice how that, you know, we're not listening for chord changes. It's not that kind of song, right? It, it, it's, it's given us this sort of musical environment centered around E flat that we're just sort of living in, Yeah. you know, while, you know, we listen to the drums come in and the bass come in. Yeah. You know? And there's this melody going on. Yeah. Yeah. Now we got a little break here. He does a lot of those kind of like little take a breath moments. Yeah. Um, 
I knew that would be flat I was talking about. Yeah. That's the higher E flat. And then you got that E flat in the bass. G low E flat. See, you've got a five string now. You can hit that. I do, I do. Little guitar break, hey. Shout out to Alex on the guitar. Yeah. The reverb adds that kind of hollow, empty, yeah. open feeling, you know. And then we're about to hear the kick drum do something very cool. Yeah. Stand by. Hold on, though. I'm listening for that seven of six chord. Could that have been it? Maybe so. <laughs> Going up on that kick drum, man. I'm a big fan of the kick drum. <laughs> and now, you hear that crashing on the two? Yeah. He does have a lot of those little spaces there. You yeah, know, he does it again. Stops, yeah. Four, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Beautifully done. And this trippy delayed guitar string. Yeah. And then we go back from the silence that we came from. We return yeah. to the land of wind and silence. Nice. Yeah. I like it. Oh, what else is... Oh, the VHS thing. Um, this feel kind of reminds me of Giorgio Morder. Are you familiar with him? No. Well, uh, big inspiration for Daft Punk. Okay. He did a lot of kind of synth sounds kind of in the 80s, German composer, and yeah. his, his sound was... Um, you probably know a few of his pieces if you heard it, but I think he did some stuff for The NeverEnding Story, for example. That I know. And that was one of the first VHSs I ever had back yeah. in the 80s. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Ru ruined us for life. That scene where the horse dies, Aww, man. Skip the, yeah, if you ever watch that movie, fast forward through the scene where the horse dies, man. You you don't need to be six years old watching that stuff. I'm telling you, nah. They're in the mud with the horse. Get out. Yeah, and and, and we wonder fast why forward. you know depression is rampant in America today. I mean, in our generation. You know, in our generation, yeah. Jeez. Okay. But this song wasn't depressing. It was. Uh, no. It was energetic for something I think called. Uh, well, I don't know. I think the whole. I think the really the, the the emotion is in the chord progression for this one. Yeah. Like you know, that just sounds. It sounds woeful, and then it, and then it kind yeah. of straightens up. You know. And we and we called attention a little bit to to the to the pauses to the rhythmic pause where the drums pause, mm -hmm. and the, and then you know coming pausing and then coming back in on the two a couple of times. Yeah. I mean, th those things are very exciting because it really does kind of yank your attention back to the drums, right? It, it yanks your attention back to the rhythm. Yeah, you know, um, which is a fat rhythm. Yeah, yeah. Fat so I mean, and to me, to me, the 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 excitement of the of this song is really in that, you know, like the rhythm letting you go and then yanking you back, and letting you go and yanking you back. Mm -hmm. Right. The, the, uh, that's pretty cool. Much like one's uh, mind might do with time alone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, so thanks again, Alex. Well done. Thank you for sending that to us. Very nice. And uh, you can hear more from Alex by searching actually Ruby in the Desert on TikTok. Nice. And on SoundCloud. Okay. And also, I think it would be nice to give a shout out to Sabrina Saids, who made this possible uh, for Alex to get encouraged to do this kind of thing. Oh, yeah. It sounds like she could be a really good resource. So you can uh, find her on Sabrina Saids at S A I D S dot co. That's her website. Nice. And maybe people who are interested in getting into production and working with, you know, I'm hearing a lot of people working with Logic Pro these days. In fact, our first yep. two composers did. Oh, yeah. So, it's it's uh, one of the big ones. Yeah. So that might be a cool resource for you guys. We'll put the link to that on the website. And uh, yeah, go check out more of Alex's music. Yeah, please. Okay. All right. What's next? Next up, we got, uh, we have Abriel. Indeed. From Utah. Abriel from Utah. Uh, Matt, do you know the meaning of this cool name, Abriel? No. Elf goddess. Oh, nice. Isn't that great? <laughs> Abriel from Utah is a senior in high school studying AP music theory. Looks like we helped her with her modes, and now she will be soon graduating and moving to, on to minor in music. Oh, wonderful. 
And after listening to a recent episode, she said she was emboldened to send in a composition. Okay. So. Let's listen. Let's listen. This is called Bittersweet by Abriel. This is a high school student, Matt. Ah, uh, no, it just makes you want to quit, doesn't it? <laughs> no, and that was beautiful. Makes me wish I was younger and started earlier. Yeah, that that was beautiful. That was um, beautiful. I I, I want to know where she got those string sounds, man. They're gorgeous. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm assuming she didn't have you know a, a, a string orchestra at her disposal. That those are sampled sounds. Well, there's some kind of sound library, but man, are, are they good? They are, I mean, yeah, the whole, the, the, over, the overall sound, the production value, everything, the mix yeah. was just yeah. beautiful. And the themes. Um, yeah, nice reverbery, reverbish, heavy, heavy mix, you know, which is, which is appropriate for this style, right? You know. Absolutely. What does it feel to me like? Yeah, it feels like a, it could be like a Pixar movie. Yeah. Like the beginning of the day. Yeah. Um, the kids are, you know, the toaster pops up. The kid slides down the banister, grabs the toast. Kind of thing, yeah. And I also, re- I also really like the the transitions between like string sounds and piano sounds, and how they went back and forth a lot. You know, and, and kind of um, reinvigorating. You know, keeping the interest flowing by 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 switching those back and forth. And th- those were artfully done yeah. too. You know, what does Abriel have to say about this, Matt? Uh, let's see. Uh, Abriel says, "I work at my city's library and listen to your podcast every day while I am shelving." <laughs> <laughs> The instruments I'm fluent in are the piano and viola, although I dabble in singing and tin whistle, and I'm taking a guitar class next semester. Yay! I've been playing viola for six years and piano for 13. Oh, wow. (laughs) Uh, My biggest inspirations are video game and movie soundtracks. Perfect. Perfect, yeah. (laughs) Nailed that. Um, I really love the Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Florence, and Zelda soundtracks in particular. Mm Mm-hmm. I write stories a lot, and sometimes I like to score my stories with short soundtracks. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that cool? So she writes stories, and then she writes a soundtrack for the story? 
Yeah, I wonder. There's, there's got to be an outlet for that somehow. Yeah, I wonder if she actually reads the story while the soundtrack is playing. That's in the what background. I was thinking. Yeah. I wonder if she could, she could like, you know, sort of like audiobook style record like uh, a reading of the story and then play the soundtrack. That would that would be neat. <laughs> that's like a whole that's like a whole new art form. Um, she continues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, regarding her composition, she recently sent a more recent mix, and this is what she said about it. Okay. Uh, I have already improved a lot in the time since I remastered this, and I have a lot of things I would fix, such as adding more bass. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I used to add low instruments to a song thinking they would compensate for low end, when in fact it turned out that my songs only sported mid and high range. That's interesting. Hmm. That is interesting. Just to add low instruments to a song, thinking they would compensate for low end. When in fact, it turned out that my songs only sported mid and high range. Mm, yeah, sort of, sort of confusing note frequency with EQ or something, mm-hmm. you know, like like pitch with EQ or EQ with pitch. You right, know, right. Th- those are two things to try to keep separate. Mm-hmm. Uh, this piece was the first commission I've done. I actually wrote it when I was 16. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're getting jealous. Right? I know, right? Just green with envy. Uh-huh. But it sounds a lot better now than the first draft did. Someone wanted an original piece that sounded like a show that I had never actually seen. Ha! Yeah, yeah. you're a composer now, Aubrey. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I read some Wikipedia articles and listened to a couple of songs from the actual soundtrack and came up with Bittersweet. I was mostly basing it on the vibes I was getting from the story rather than the actual music, though. Uh, that's what I would do. Just just speaking as a composer, mm-hmm. I wouldn't, you know, if somebody wanted, I would try to follow the story, right? I mean, music emotionally informs the story. That, you know, I, I think that was a good decision. Yeah. For the time being, this is the ultimately mastered version, is I have a lot of other music projects I'm working on. I bet. <laughs> yeah, isn't that fantastic? <laughs> that's great. I love it. I love it. So good, too. Good grief. I'd have been proud to write that. Yeah. I'm yeah. so jealous. Yeah. A lot of cool stuff going on. A lot of interesting stuff, too. Um, this is... It's weird, because I, I want to say this is in the key of G, even though the G chord only shows up once in the whole song. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the reason I say this is because we had this kind of... Um, uh, C major and D major, yeah. back and forth. So... If it was in, um, if it was in the key of C, then this would have been C major and D minor, you know? Right. So this is... And we have other chords like so really E minor. This is, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, we have other chords like E minor, C, D. So when you're looking at the overall B minor, you just B minor in there. When you look at the overall kind of feel, you, you get a sense that we're in a, not that it really matters, mm-hmm. right? But um, I just think it's kind of cool the way, it's almost like four to five constantly. Mm-hmm. It just sounds like there's an intip- and you're anticipating something great, you know, like uh, you're waiting for something, you know. It's yeah. like, like the beginning of a day, like uh, yeah. Maybe it's the big soccer game and you're happy about it. You know, I'm analyzing. So An- analyze. <laughs> then we have the second theme. Um, the first theme is this. Um, what is it? That kind of thing. And that's, yeah. that's what you kind of, she works with throughout the piece. Yeah. So that, yeah. E, E, B, B, E, F sharp. Mm-hmm. And then the F sharp corresponding to the, to the, to the D chord, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Um, was it? Yeah, there you go. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. We are so yeah. nerding out at this point, but yeah. We're not pianists. Um, We're not actual pianists. Absolutely not. Um, oh, and by the way, Jeremy is playing piano today, ladies oh, yeah, and gentlemen. That's right. so, I'm, taking, uh, I'm taking the. Yeah, so so uh, you know, send all your nasty comments to him. Yeah, yeah, not, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm yeah. kidding. Um, yeah. So uh, is this? There's only one G mm-hmm. in this song. Mm-hmm. So the idea is: is this a four to five feel? Mm-hmm. And can it be if there's only one G in this song? And the G is kind of in the context of when it moves to E minor. Is it? Or mm-hmm. yeah, there's a. I think, and according to my analysis, just listening to her music, I just at one point it goes E minor. And then briefly, boom, boom, just G briefly back to this E minor. So it's only was a passing tone yeah, for E minor. Yeah, so you, you could wonder if this is four to five in G. You could wonder if this is one to major two in C. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there is. I mean, there is a precedent for a, a two chord being a dominant function in chord in a lot of uh, South American music. Mm-hmm. Um. 
you could wonder if this is seven to one in D, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Interesting. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it would have to be D Mixolydian. Uh huh. But but it would it it, it, it we'd, we 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 would pull it off. That happens a lot. Yeah. Um. And I think that sense of never really establishing a functional harmony adds to sort of the sense of wistfulness mm. that you feel when you listen to this, right? Mm-hmm. Wistfulness, that's a good word for it. I mean, the vibe of this song is not a I fit perfectly into my world kind of, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a vibe to this song of, of mystery, of, a, yeah, of um, you know, uh, uh, something just kind of, yeah, j- just just a little bit on the outskirts of everyday life, right? Mm-hmm. And and we're not really ever supposed to look and, and nail it down. I don't think you know. I, I think part of the wistfulness of the song is that you know you could analyze C and D a lot of ways, and and you know she she never really feels the need to drive it home for us one way or the other. You know, we're, so we're going to keep this sort of level of of, of wistfulness of, of almost otherworldliness, mm-hmm. right? Uh, going through the whole thing. It is a great example of why I don't think of music theory as a set of rules, yeah. right? Because it's easy to look at something like this and say, "Well, you're breaking the rules, right?" I mean, there's no such thing as a major two chord, or you, you know, you got to give us a G, or you, you know, something's got to be going on here. Well, no, yeah, no, yeah. they don't, right? Uh, music theory is not a set of rules, yeah, and you can defy circle of fifths progression, or you can defy tonal function. In ways that create a certain feeling, and if that feeling is what you're going for, then that's what you should do. Mission right? accomplished. Mission accomplished. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, again, we had this main kind of theme going on, and so we're going to listen again. What, what what you should listen for is a couple of cool things that happen here. Um, again, we start off kind of fast, and then again mm-hmm. the same chords, but he, she slows it down. And then at some point, we kind of do a similar thing, but instead of the C, we're doing E minor and D, you mm-hmm. know? That kind of thing. Yeah, so we go E minor to, we go E minor to D, mm-hmm. and then and to, to, to where from there? Just E minor and D. Okay, so this is a similar so situation, just transposed. Substi- substituting yeah. the C for E minor. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, so that's the original theme, is again, in a different kind of harmony. Yeah. And then we have the second theme that kind of, which is very cool and interesting, same chords going back and forth, uh, C and D, but it's like, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, very familiar sounding melody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to, to us of our generation. To us of our generation. <laughs> she may not know what we're talking about. <laughs> she may about. not know what we're talking about at all. Yeah. <laughs> but what did you say? Nothing is new under the sun. Nothing in terms is of that. new under the sun. But it really does. That's when, to me, that's when the piece kind of lifts up. And yeah, it adds, uh, all this life is breathed into it. Yeah, it, it, it takes on a kind of epic quality there. Yeah, again, that, without really having changed the tonality at all. You know, so, we're talking about melodic epicness. Yes, and I would call that the second theme. And then later on, the third theme you're going to hear, which is probably I think my favorite part, is uh, when she actually goes into three four. She yeah. goes into a waltz, and uh, and you got this harmony of uh, what C major seven yeah. D, and then. Again, but this time B minor. Yeah. So it's a really cool kind of effect. Her using substituting D for B minor kind of adds just a little bit of extra um, reality to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not everything is so rosy. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking through these chord changes to see, uh, and, and trying to f- see if she ever sort of clues us in into what, what key she's thinking of. Yeah, well, and and I, yeah, I'm really not, you know. The last chord in the song is a D, you know. Yeah. So if we are in G, we're ending on five. Yeah, but if we are in D mixolydian, we are technically ending on one. So there's that. Yeah. Maybe it could be a D mixolydian. It's it, there's something modal about this. And, and it, she told us mm, that she said that we she learned a lot about modes. About the modes from, from us. Yeah. So, so maybe so. Yeah. Maybe we should call this D mixolydian. Maybe know. we should call this D mixolydian. Aubrielle, I should have yeah. asked you that. <laughs> yeah. Hit me back and we'll find we'll find out. She's having too much fun watching us struggle over it to actually <laughs> tell us at this point. I'm sure. I bet her parents, if they're listening, they're probably like, "What the heck are they talking about?" <laughs> well, hey, let's listen one more time, shall we? And comment and yammer through it as we do. All right. Bittersweet by Abriel. Here we go. Let's go back in C and D. This harp. 
harp, little harp action yeah. going on. Those sounds are so good. Mm-hmm. I wonder if she's doing some of this on her on the viola. I wonder too now. I mean, does it sound like a solo viola? Uh, she could be layering uh, or just using strings. So here comes that main theme again. Tremolo strings. Mm. Now we have a little E minor interlude. And main theme with the E minor substitution instead of C. Uh. There's that B minor. up to the change up mm. second theme coming up good anticipation yeah yeah it sounds triumphant yeah the kids won the soccer game <laughs> Now here we go, We're about to move into a waltz. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. So nice little change up. We're in a waltz now. Yeah, that piano transition is just really nice. Yeah, this is yeah. so airy and peaceful. Yeah. That is, that is three, four, yeah. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. I almost don't want to talk over this part. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been talking much. <laughs> and then back to the yeah, main theme. Very responsible thing for a composer to do, I would say. Yep. Well, that's how you that's how you drive the main theme home, right? You know, kind of close it up, close it up with it. Yeah, one day we'll we'll do a podcast on my crazy out there uh, ideas on musical narrative and uh-huh. leaving home and returning. In, mm, yeah, yeah, the hero's journey. The, yeah, and relating it to Joseph Campbell's hero's tale, and where you where you start in a place, you you go to uh, uh, another place, mm-hmm. you know, and and then return to the, the to, to your original pace. You know, having learned something metaphorically. Abriel, did you know that you just took us on our hero's tale? <laughs> a hero's journey? Uh, oh, that's very nice. Yeah, I like that. So a shout out to Abriel. Um, and uh, also just, um, yeah, to be so young and to be so bold. I, I, I really know. appreciate it. I really and I, that. And I feel like I've just about decided this is in D Mixolydian. I think you're right. Uh, I'm not going to argue that. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe I, I could still be wrong. I, that's always a possibility. But I, I I feel like maybe C major and D major is, is D mixolydian, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So fair enough. Yep. So you can uh, you can hear more of Abriel's music by entering her name in uh, at A U B R I E L on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify. Probably by the time you're on Apple Music and Spotify, you're also on Amazon and all the other major platforms. Probably, because I think you yeah. use the same service to get to those. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, if you go to her YouTube page, you'll hear other things she's done, other compositions, other songs. She sings a few things. Real pretty voice. Definitely worth checking out. And um, well done, Abriel. We Very can, nice. Can't wait to hear what else you come up with. I, indeed. Okay, we're, shall we move on now, Matt? Yes, let's move on. Okay, this is a fun one here. Okay. Um, Matt Lemon from Dayton, Ohio. Okay. Has a little piece called Cannonball Run. <laughs> Did you ever watch the movie? I was going to say, that's an old, old 80s movie. Matt never saw either of these movies. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's, it's a movie. Burt Reynolds, Dom DeLuise. The it first, wasn't John Candy in it at one point? He was. I think he was the trooper, maybe. Uh, yeah, or, maybe I might be thinking about something different. I, but he was, um, and also, um, oh, God. Jackie Chan. That was the first time I saw Jackie Chan. It blew my well, mind. Yeah. I, I haven't seen those movies since I was a kid. That's... Well, the idea was these uh, different people would get in these really nice expensive cars and drive and, from and race. one was... side of the yeah. country to the other. 
Yeah. But anyways, Matt plays in a bluegrass band called Lemongrass. Okay. With his brother, Chris, his wife, Mara, and some other friends of theirs. Nice. Now, here's a fun fact, Matt. Matt's brother won the Mercedes Marathon that we had here in Birmingham. Did I tell you about this? <laughs> no. Matt's brother, Chris, was the winner. I mean, he, he was the one that broke the finish line. Wow. At the Mercedes Marathon here in Birmingham. Now, my band, Jenny's Mixtape, was playing the party, the after party. <laughs> So it turns out his brother you, heard, you, our, heard our band playing. Uh, nice. Oh, man. And so he, Matt says, I don't, know if, I don't know what Chris says, but Matt says Chris is going to use this money to buy some recording gear. Oh, good. <laughs> so uh, Matt, what does Matt have to say? So Matt says, I've been listening to the show for months, and I'm up through episode 93 in sequence and still enjoying it. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice work on that Sonata. Hey, thank it you. It means thank you, you, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, every time a listener composition episode rolls around, I've wanted to have something to add, and I'm finally there. I got the idea for this song about six months six months ago when a coworker mentioned this thing called the Cannonball Run, which I'd never heard of. Mm-hmm. It's an unofficial fastest time driving from New York to L.A., and these guys reset the record in 2020 with a time of 25.39. I assume that means 25 hours and 39 minutes. <sighs> I can't imagine that, that. That's booking it, man. That's, that's booking, booking it. it. I spent some time researching the story and came up with the chorus pretty quickly, but the rest of the verses took a while to figure out. I went through several iterations of chord progressions and couldn't find a melody, so I let it sit for a while. I was at, It was after listening to your blues episode, I really enjoyed the emotional singing and started messing around with some melodies of my own. When I came back to this song, I ended up developing the melody by singing different variations and recording voice memos on my phone until I got something workable. Then I grabbed the guitar and tried different chords over it. Uh, it turned out to be E minor for the chorus, 1-4-1-3-1-3-4-1-1. Uh, one, 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 one. Oddly without a 5. Uh, which I didn't really plan on, just fell out of what I thought sounded good with the melody. I chose to use a different melody for the verses, and the chords start on G major as the relative major. Uh, one, four, one, six, one, four, two, six, again mm-hmm. with no five. I am mm-hmm. curious what you make of those chord progressions. Uh, Lemongrass recently did a live show at a small coffee house called the Bellhop Cafe and performed this song out for the first time, which was also the first time anything I've written has been performed, which was pretty cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. Jeremy, you might get a kick out of the accompaniment, including a baron, which <laughs> sets a nice beat. <laughs> yeah. His wife, Mara, plays the baron, and she really kicks it, man. Nice. She really kicks it. Nice. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, me too. Um, and yeah, looking at the chords, you have the chords there, right? I'm looking at the chords as he explained them, yeah. And yes, there is no D in this. This is, We're in the key of G. Yeah. I see zero Ds. Yeah, I see z- not not a D was given. No five chords. So that's interesting, huh? Yeah. So the, the chorus being one, four, and then one and three. So that, you know, if you think of three as a substitution for one, then this is essentially, again, uh, a lot of one prolongation, which we mentioned uh, previously. <laughs> yeah. Um. And then uh, one four one six again, you know, uh, uh, essentially a lot of prolongation. There is that one two, mm-hmm. yeah. So we where we sort of start around the circle of fifths, but we we don't get very far, right? One four two six. Mm-hmm. Um, those three together might be thought of as as predominant functioning chords, but again, but again with with no fi- with no five there. Um, it's, it, how do you build drama without a five? How do you, well, Matt yeah. figures it out. <laughs> I guess yeah. he does. Let's listen. Also, I do want to mention that uh, in, in the mix, the um, his voice wasn't quite up front at the very beginning, yeah. so I'll go ahead and read what he says. Uh, One red light to get out of Manhattan, it was looking like their day. Stuck behind a trooper in Pennsylvania, and then they finally got on their way. Mm-hmm. Oh, when Then they really got on their way, my bad. So it's kind of setting up uh, where they're going to be going. And then the, the chorus is pretty cool. Push the pedal to the floor, push the pedal even more. No time to stop and see the sights. Just make it there tonight. <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah, it's gonna have this. And it being bluegrass, we're expecting right. a little bit of a yeah. high octane ride here. Yeah, yeah. All right. So what you're about to hear is uh, the Cannonball Run, written by Matt Lemon, and this is this is um, Lemongrass, which is a fantastic name for a bluegrass band, by the way. <laughs> uh, Matt Lemon on the vocals and fiddles. That's him singing. Yeah. Chris Lemon uh, on banjo slash marathon winner. <laughs> Mara Lemon on the ball run, Jeff Martin on guitar, and Chip Pritchard on the bass. Yeah. And this is, uh, they're out of Dayton, Ohio. Huh. Cannonball Run. Here we go. Three.
Somebody painted like a loser. They picked up a police car. Some ratted out a trooper that didn't look right at all. Nowhere to go but straight ahead to the Arizona line. They gunned the engine and floored the rest, and well, they made it fine. Push the pedal to the floor, then push the pedal even more. No time to stop and see the sides, just make it there tonight. New York City to LA, 3,000 miles along the way. They went so fast and got it done, they set the fastest cannonball run. They went so fast and got it done, they set the fastest cannonball run. Yeah. <laughs> nice. They cut out the clap, so we'll clap for them. Yeah. 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 Wasn't Good that job. cool? Yeah, that 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 was yeah, that was a barn burner, man. I uh, when I first got into that band Tunnel Vision, I was in in college. We we started off playing bluegrass with uh, Jason Bailey on the mandolin, Colin mm -hmm. on the guitar, you know. And I just uh, I never really played a lot of bluegrass before. I just thought it was silly country stuff. And right. Then I really got into it huge, like really got into it. You know, yeah. I still enjoy it. You know, a lot these days. And um, these guys pulled it off very well. Oh yeah, and I love uh, the bluegrass with the ball on. What a great little, uh, little great little Celtic, uh, uh, yeah, you know, addition. Yeah, that was that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> I mean, those two genres have uh, some historical ancestry, right? Oh, very yeah. much. Yeah. yeah, Appalachians. Yeah, uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, uh, you know, um, I'm I'm looking at these chord progressions, uh huh, and I don't really miss the five all that much. No, no. Um, again, you know, he so, so he says E minor for the chorus, and a lot of this, again, you know, that idea of one prolongation, right? One, four, one, and then three is, is sort of immediate related. So one, prolongation four, like, of one. Push the pedal to the floor. Yeah. Yeah, four to one. So it's like a plagal kind of thing. In yeah, e kind of like a plagal sort of cadence kind of thing. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, the verse that he called that is in uh, G major, mm -hmm. uh, similar, similar deal, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm again not really missing the five. Yeah, but we've got a one four one prolongation. <laughs> yeah, and then one four two six. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, can. So uh, in G major two is A, mm -hmm. which is the four of E minor, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we've just sort of done that thing. We, we've just done the sort same sort of movement to get back into E minor from G major. Yeah, yeah. I guess we just call. Yeah, it six, I, I honestly wonder if you couldn't analyze the verse as continuing to be in G major. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, then it would be three six three. Six. Or, or sorry, uh, can, is just being in E minor, right? Is E minor being the goal of the verse? Okay, I see what you're saying. So, so um, one four one in in G major, which is G C G, in E minor, that's going to be three six three one, you know, prolongation of one mm -hmm. still, and then three six, and then three six four one. You yeah, know, again, uh, so prolongation. So I, I wonder if you could maybe think of that as an E minor too, as yeah, starting on G, yes, but the end goal is still being E, in in, in the in, in the in the verse there, or maybe we just have another great composer telling the story with music. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yeah, yeah, man. So, Cannonball Run by Matt Lemon and Lemongrass out of Dayton, Ohio. Very nice, very cool stuff. Man. Yeah, I we, enjoy that. We love to get singers. Uh, we love to get compositions. We don't talk during the singers, so you can hear the words and the lyrics and everything. Right? Yeah, yeah. But I would certainly go back and listen to that again if I were you guys. Yeah, many in, times. indeed. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting how how all of these chord progressions sort of eschew mm. uh, the 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 traditional idea you know, of well, you need a five, right? Ah. Or you know, you need to you need to drop us down to G for you know to, to let us know what key we're in, and, and you know, all of our composers in this this run through is is kind of like, yep, yeah, no, we don't messing with you our know. expectations. Yeah, and and, and you know, uh, doing just fine, right? Doing, doing just, just fine, fine. just know? fine. You can find, uh, you can go on Facebook and check out Lemongrass Dayton. Uh, as I'm sure there's lots of lemongrasses on Facebook. Dayton, Ohio is where they're from. Right. And uh, that's one place where I know to find them. Indeed. And I hope you find them and like them and share them. Yeah. And, and congratulations on winning. The on Chris. <laughs> yeah. The marathon winner. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. You ready to move on? Yeah. Let's do. 
Okay, next we have a listener, Neil Malley from Denton, Texas. Indeed. And uh, he's got a piece called The Seated Wanderer. Okay. Now, uh, Neil Malley took piano lessons early in life and then tenor and bass trombone through middle school and college. Okay. He bought his first synthesizer at 14 and fell in love with the tech side of music production. Hmm. He has built a music-adjacent career as a post-audio engineer for Animation Dialogue. Oh, wow. Matt, how cool is that? Mm, that great. Like, that's like my dream. Yeah. You know? Um, so now in his 50s, he's working on his first solo album, thanks to his newfound confidence inspired by our listener composers. <laughs> Give y'all selves a hand. Indeed. Neil says he appreciates our humility, digressions, and uh, the occasional wrong notes. It happens. <laughs> I love how we complain about we we I think our soft sides are showing because people keep writing in and saying, No nah, man, it's cool. Y'all can die this all you want to. Hit those wrong notes. Glad glad we have some defenders out there. Yeah. He says we make music human. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He had a cool thing going on pre-COVID where he and some of his musician co-workers would get together and share their compositions and discuss theory and production techniques. Now, during COVID, he says he realizes what a communal thing music was because he didn't really compose a whole lot during COVID. Mm. (laughs) Neither did I, really. (laughs) Did you, Matt? Uh, Probably not a great deal, no. Not as much as you could have with all that time given, huh? Exactly, yeah. But now they're back at the office and they're going to try and pick it back up. So Neil has been developing his engineering skills over many years now. Now he takes on music. Excellent. So let's give ourselves a first listen. Let's do This is Neil Malley with The Seated Wanderer.
<laughs> wow. I felt like I was taken to another. You know what this reminds me of? What? It's like, um, you know, you, you walk into a bar on an alien planet, and this is what the <laughs> band is playing in the background. <laughs> kind of you know, Star Wars y. Bartender comes up to you and says, Kita. Yeah. <laughs> what? Bartender just got like four arms and insect eyes, and yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I, I bet you Dr. Angel would like this. I bet he would. We had a professor, Dr. Angel, who was really into experimental sounds and yeah. trippy kind of ideas. And yeah. I wonder if Neil, after years of working in animation and cartoon environment, yeah. has inspired has been inspired by this kind of wacky kind of kind of the wackiness this, of this, yeah. This I saw I thought it kind of sounded like some kind of like an elephant, like that kind yeah. of like Yeah, I want to know how, how he made that sound. Yes. That, that would be the I think that's the one of the cool tricks of this is he seems to be quite the sculptor yeah. here in terms of sounds. Yeah. Uh, and also, I'm glad we're listening to this in the stereo feed on our yeah. headphones because yeah, yeah. there's a lot of cool stereo tricks. Yeah, know? kind of the back and forth and along the pan and, and things, yeah. Yeah, bendy, a lot of bendiness. Yeah. Um, yeah, good stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, I like the, yeah, so the bass line, F, C, D sharp, E, F, I'm assuming that's boom, 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 that part. yeah. Yeah, there you go. Nice chromatic ascending mm -hmm. uh, uh, bass line. Yeah. And then you got the main kind of, the the main kind of theme, which I consider is a, that little thing starting on the fi, starting on scale degree five. Right, yeah. And he kind of takes that throughout and kind of messes with it, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, uh, the, uh, da, 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 very syncopated melody, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. a good syncopated. I like a, a melody that starts on like the set, an upbeat. Yeah. I, I don't and know why. Two, a three e and four and right. It's so, like one, two, three, four, one. Two, two. It's like it's like you you were gonna say something and then you held yourself and then you decided <laughs> to say it anyways. Yeah. You know. It, well, it reinforces rhythm. I'll I'll seek I'll seek impatient actually, and I guess it's a little ironic, but it has a tendency to to reinforce our sense of rhythm. Mm-hmm. Because we, we, we need to focus on the rhythm to understand it. So so it sort of reinvigorates rhythm. Uh-huh. You know. Which is weird. You would think something that's happening off the rhythm would do would do the opposite, would would cloud rhythm. But yeah. Yeah, right. it, it really just reinforces rhythm. Mm-hmm. It's it's great. Yeah. So very cool, man. Well, what is uh what does Neil have to say about this, Matt? What does Neil have to say? Neil says my music tends towards an eighties inspired soundtrackish feel. Not intentionally, it's just what I marinated in in the 80s. <laughs> I understand. Uh, this song, Seated Wanderer, is an electronic piece I sketched out on a laptop while on a transatlantic flight. Mm -hmm. Having traveled quite a bit, I've set foot in 42 of the 50 U.S. states. Nice. It struck me as sort of absurd that I feel free to travel but have to be crammed into a crowded airplane or sit in a car to do so. Not like I'd prefer walking, but it just seems so sedentary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in this day and age, you're really crammed in like sardines too. You know, I mean, they they really take all the adventure out of travel sometimes. <laughs> anyway, in this song, I kept the underlying chords pretty simple while I explored melody, melodic variation, and arrangement. Little bits of melody from different instruments play off each other and bounce around. I also wanted to try creating a false ending in the piece and to use synth blips and sweeps as musical notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sweeps. Yeah, false ending meaning not returning to the to the one chord. I think he I think he just meant like, hey, this is the end of the song. No, nope, oh, and then nope. nope, nope, nope. What? Sorry, no. Nope. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, all right. That's yeah. what I got from it, anyways. Yeah, good plan. Yeah, yeah. So we're in F minor. Yeah, and uh, yeah, let's listen one more time. All right, shall we? Yeah. And comment as we go. Is our bass line? Boom! 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 More or less maintains throughout the piece. Yep. I love this drum groove. I was just about to say, we didn't mention the drum groove. That that was a good one. It's yeah, a good groove. We're adding a cool little texture to it. Yeah. Not conventional drum sounds. Uh-uh. It's kind of like a spy movie kind of feel. Like something's up. Something's, <laughs> something's up. Now we got a new synth sound here. Is it a flat five? Yeah. 
maybe maybe seven. I don't know. Maybe so. Something blue. Yeah. Yeah, that bass line does give it kind of a spy feel, like like a French spy movie kind of, mm-hmm. like a very Secret Service. Or- yeah. And whatever that is, I don't know. I have no idea what that is. Yeah. This is fun. There are a lot of sound effects going on. Very psychedelic. Yeah. Am I in the right frame of mind for this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, here we go. New theme. Pretty groovy, man. Yeah. And he throws a third harmony over it. Yeah. <laughs> Great way to drive it home. Great way to, to add interest, to, mm-hmm. you know, to, to do that second version with the third, parallel thirds. This vi- little video game bleeps. This might be the false ending he's talking about. Very Donkey Kong. Don- uh, thank you. I was, trying, I was like, where did I hear that? <laughs> what video game was that? I know it was one of those. Some old ones. 80s arcade. Yeah. And it's like, Mm-mm-mm. that's it. We're done. Nope. No, we're not. Yeah. Now we're back in full effect. Right, right, yeah. With these cool little cats. There kind of sounds going on. Yeah. It's trippy. You mentioned tonal vision. This almost sounds like something tonal vision would <laughs> would do. Yeah, right? Dr. Angel might have come to more of our shoes if we did. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, all these little glitches and all these weird little kind of sounds. They're just fun. Yeah. Alien. Yeah, I wonder how much time. Well, he said he was on a transatlantic flight, so 13 or 14 hours, I, I guess. Like, but yeah, uh, I was thinking, you know, he must have spent a lot of time just sort of, you know, exploring these different sort of sound effects and you know, which one do I want where? And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised knowing what I know of him that he could have created some of these himself, mm. you know. Now we're back to the main theme again. This whole kind of ramping up tape kind of thing. That was tri- that was trippy. That Wasn't was awesome. It? Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it cool? A lot of fun on that one. Oh yeah. That was a sonic adventure. That was a sonic adventure, indeed. With a good groove, accompanied by a fine groove and a cool hook. Yeah, indeed. All right. So well done. Well done. I yeah. Some sometimes you just gotta get lost in a piece like that, don't you? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. It's easy to. Yeah. Yeah. Neil, Neil Malley. Thanks again, brother. Thank you, Neil. We appreciate it. You can find Neil Malley on SoundCloud. Just look up. Just look name. up Neil Malley. N e a l m a l l e y. We'll we'll do. Another fine composer, and congratulations on that piece. Indeed. Keep, keep it coming, Neil. Keep it coming, Neil. We appreciate it. Okay, we have one more piece left, Matt. One left. Okay. And this will be the one that we close the episode on. Okay. So we're not going to be saying anything afterwards. We'll be gone after that. Okay. So we got to say everything we can about it beforehand. Beforehand. Okay. All right, so this is Steve from an undisclosed subterranean location. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. He said, that's, that's, call me that. Yeah. Steve is a funny dude. This is a character here. You're going to love this. Okay. This song is called 16 Measures. Okay, I'm, I'm getting a sense of how long it is. <laughs> at, least the, at least the break, in, or at least the, uh, the chorus. In yeah. Um, Steve contacted us after hearing our episode about melodic organization and thematic development. Mm-hmm. Uh, he put his this wonderful little song together for his daughter, Erica, on her 16th birthday. Okay. It seems like I remember that. I played this one for you a long time yeah, ago. Okay, first, okay, when okay. I first got this email, I was like, Matt, you got to hear this. <laughs> yeah. Now, all the while acknowledging that a 16-year-old may not find this to be a particularly cool and maybe even cringe-inducing kind of thing, right? <laughs> if it's your 16-year-old, I promise you that's the, how they feel. Uh-huh. And that's the, I promise you that's how they feel. Matt, everything you do is is uncool and cringeworthy. Just <laughs> you buy them a car, that's uncool. Yeah, yeah. 
make him a pizza. That's uncool. Ah, no, don't do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not gonna. We're not, okay. Okay. <laughs> Matt, what is uh, what is Steve? Uh, some of our, our parenthood gripes are coming through here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what does Steve have to say about this song, Matt? Uh, Steve says, after listening to your latest episode, I can proudly say that it incorporates many of the techniques you outlined. Uh, some were conscious at the time, and some were less so. From the muses, of course. Mm -hmm. At any rate, I had lots of fun writing and arranging it. A bit less fun doing the singing, <laughs> and still less fun listening to the singing. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, I can relate. Uh, but I have to say that writing music with words adds a significant amount of complication and fun to the process for me. Maybe one day I'll bite the bullet that Matt recently has and take some singing lessons. Uh, you know, I, I, I recommend it. I really do. Even Matt, if you don't think you're going to ever be a singer. Matt, you've come a long way in the, time, in the small amount of time you've been taking singing lessons. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm giving it my all there. Uh, the original idea was 16 bars, but I didn't want my daughter to get the impression that I was recommending an epic underage pub crawl. <laughs> So I use the term measures instead of bar. Mm -hmm. uh, chorus three is the is from the perspective of revisiting the song sixteen years in the future, when the kid is now thirty two years old. So we've got a six we've got a sixteen theme going here. I like mm -hmm. I like it, uh, and no longer embarrassed by her parents. You hope, <laughs> and hopefully receptive to the idea that the song was a sweet and well intentioned gift, <laughs> right? <laughs> so uh, the last verse so. The verse and chorus is pretty standard format on this one, you know? Yeah. On the last verse, he adds some extra reverb to his voice and steps it up from A major to B flat. Yes. The little the kind of gear shift key yeah. change. Yeah. Um, and that he does that to step up the energy and to also convey a different settings, you know, like 16 years into the future. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So the overall vocal sound was achieved by adding a little distortion and it kind of resulted in a mid-range kind of telephone sound. You know, so yeah. it almost sounds like he could be calling her on the phone. Right. You know? Yeah. Even though that's a very 90s yeah, thing. To yeah. Do. Even though that doesn't happen. Yeah. That doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> no one, no one even calls. They just text these days. Yeah. Know? I know. Right. Got our ages showing here. It, real bad. Um, I was about to do a Jenny, I got your number reference and then just l really thought better of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else does he have to say about this? He says, I shared the finished song with accompanying video. With my daughter via emailed YouTube link on the morning of her 16th birthday. Mm -hmm. I didn't get any reaction. So I asked her in the evening if she had gotten it. She confirmed that she had with no further comment. <laughs> uh, so probably out of a sense of tact. Uh -oh. So reception pretty much as expected from a 16-year-old developing a sense of independence from her parents. Mm -hmm. I have listened to it with her since then, and she has uh, commented that the tee hee hee in verse two is amusing. <laughs> so the song hasn't gone completely unnoticed or unappreciated by her. And I love the tee hee hee, -hee part. That's pretty hilarious. That is. You, you're going to enjoy the tee hee hee part. Yeah. Um, <laughs> before we hear this, I just have a few more thoughts on okay. this one. Yeah. You know, um, Steve is not entirely confident in his, in his singing abilities. Oh, who is? You know, but he puts his ego on the line for his little girl. That's sweet. His sweet little baby girl. Yeah. And when you hear this, try and put yourself in Erica's shoes, okay? Nothing is less cool than your parents, you know, <laughs> at that age, right? Right. But when she turns 32, I bet she'll love it like nothing yeah. else. The only, the only thing less cool than your parents is probably the phrase, at that age. Right, 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 right. <laughs> we need to watch that. <laughs> we don't even need to be ageist here. No, yeah, watch our ageism, yeah. But I, I kind of dig the way he intentionally uses the technology of the day, like he uses the words playlist, JPEG, MPEG. Right. Hoping that that will create a sense of nostalgia when this is reviewed 16 years from now. Right, yeah. Talk about thinking ahead. No kidding, yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So, um, let's see here. You know, uh, my daughter, Chloe, is 19, you know? Yeah. And we did some fun little musical projects with her yeah. back in the day. But uh, now I'm thinking about... It'd be a cool thing to write a song for. I yeah. should have done that a long time ago. It's just a great idea. So sweet, so clever. And this made me laugh. It made me cry. <laughs> it ran because of the daughter thing. Yeah, you right. Know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if this doesn't bring a smile to your face, I think you need to have your face checked out. <laughs> we want to thank all of our composers. Thank for, you uh, all so much. We have really thoroughly enjoyed this, as we do every time. We want to congratulate them for taking that step, and maybe they'll inspire other listeners to do the same. Well, you certainly inspired me. All of you have. Y'all continue uh, to inspire us. Indeed. Uh, and we're talking about Visa Oscar. Yes. Alex Turnbull. Abriel. Matt Lemon and his band Lemongrass. Neil Malley. 
And now, Steve from an undisclosed subterranean location <laughs> with 16 Measures. Album pictures in JPEG, they never fade. But there always is so much outside the frame. Those outside memories bring me back to such precious days. Contemplating the beauty of the pictures in my mind. Fifteen birthday cakes, counting up the candles. Some are in JPEG, all stored in memory. Sixteenth birthday cake, add another candle. What gift can I give? Will it be worth remembering? How about sixteen measures for a sixteenth birthday with a sixteen candle cake so sweet? On the TV Still makes me giggle Tee hee 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 All amateurish handheld scenes Shot by yours truly But filled with meaning Because they star you and me Taking your first steps Baby talk confounds me Watching it again So many memories Starting driver's ed No more baby babble Here's a gift to you Even though you may not want it But here goes sixteen measures for with a 16 candle cake so sweet 16 measures of an upbeat chorus in this little tune just for you 16 measures for a 16th birthday on this modest little birthday tree 16 measures, 16 candles, 16 years no can beat I know this song is not so strong to add to your playlist uh -uh. please save the file this mp3 because 16 years from now we can sing to the back and cut a okay track one more time So sweet. Sixteen measures of an upbeat chorus in this little tune I wrote for you. Sixteen measures for your sixteenth birthday were my modest little gift to you. Sixteen measures, sixteen candles, sixty-four cringy beats. Sixteen years none could beat.